Hello, I'm Robin Henning, and welcome to another Exchange Life Nugget of Truth. Now, what is the one thing that makes Satan and his minions tremble? It's not worship, and it's not even the preaching of the Word. It's warfare prayers. Now, this is a specific form of prayer that utilizes our authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to bind the enemy and then to set free the one that is under attack. I liken the typical and intercessory prayer to ICBMs that carry a standard warhead. They do damage, but not major damage. Now, on the other hand, warfare prayers are like ICBMs that carry a nuclear payload. They obliterate the enemy's work. Now, recently, one of my clients texted me and asked me for prayer because she was coming under heavy assault from the enemy. So I launched a nuclear warfare prayer on her behalf. And she texted me shortly thereafter saying, I don't know what you prayed for me, but thank you. Apparently the assault immediately ceased. And it's been my experience that unless you come from a Pentecostal church background, most believers have never been taught how to pray any kind of warfare prayer or nuclear warfare prayer. In fact, most evangelical Christians think they're impervious to Satan's attacks just because the Holy Spirit lives in them. Well, the truth is that Satan can't do whatever he wants to us, but he certainly can and will attack us, especially if we give him permission to do so by giving ground to him. Now, what do I mean by giving ground? Well, that comes from the Apostle Paul when he wrote Ephesians 4.26, where he says, you know, be angry, but don't sin and don't let the sun go down in your anger and give the devil an opportunity. And that Greek word there is topos. It can be translated opportunity, or it can be translated foothold, or it can be translated ground. It's a military concept. If my life is like a walled-in castle, when the enemy launches his assault, whether it be a temptation, accusation, or deception, if I buy into it, he's going to advance. He's going to gain ground so that the next time he launches his assault, it's that much easier for him to hit his target. If I give in over and over enough, he's going to camp right outside my wall and build his stronghold that he uses against me to keep me trapped in sin or keep me trapped in a lie or some other uh, accusation or uh, paralyzed with fear, anxiety, depression, bitterness, um, anger and rage and addiction, any number of things. So beloved, when, when we dabble in darkness or we give in to sin or wrong patterns of thinking, we literally are giving Satan the legal right to claim that place or that ground or that foothold in our life. And from this foothold, he's going to launch even more attacks against us through temptation, accusation, and deception. Now, while he can't kill us, he certainly can try to steal our joy, steal our, our faith, our hope, our love for the Lord, our freedom from addiction and such, behavior patterns. And he can take us that, down that path so far with despair and hopelessness that he even can convince us to kill ourselves. I've known believers that have succumbed to that lie, that everything will be better if. Beloved, we need to realize that prayer is like ammunition. It's like the bullets in our gun. And prayerlessness is basically standing there holding your gun and not shooting at the enemy. And unfortunately, I believe that the American church today is, is weak and anemic at best simply because of its prayerlessness. I know very few churches that have healthy prayer meetings. They're very good at doing programs. They're very good at doing Bible studies. But their prayer meetings are so poorly attended that some of them have even stopped doing them at all. And, and in many cases, there, there are very few saints in those churches who understand warfare praying. It's more like, be with this person and bless this person and, and, and give them strength. Well, okay, but that's not really going to come against the enemy. That's like throwing darts at the enemy. It's not even really shooting at him. So, beloved, here's what I'd like to do. I, w I want you to spend this week or the next two weeks till I, you see me again and ask the Lord to show you where you've given ground to the enemy. 
It can be through dabbling in darkness, watching things that uh, glorify evil on, on TV or the movies or any number of places. It can be through um, believing enemies, the enemy's lies or through bitterness and unforgiveness, through rebellion. It can be through um, generational passage of sin that we've never stood up to and said no more. Um, it can be through repetitive, addictive behaviors and such. There's a lot of different areas where we can give ground to the enemy, but ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. And the next time we're going to start on this journey of teaching you how to do some basic warfare praying. Okay, and there's also some warfare prayers available on our website for free. You just need to subscribe and download the Way of the Cross. It's on the front page, home page of the website. Um, and uh, you know, when you subscribe, they'll send you those documents for free. And if you don't want to stay subscribed to the blog, you can always unsubscribe. It's easy. But let me encourage you to do that. Go to the website, download the warfare prayers that we have there. And then we're going to talk through the strategy that we need to use to be effective warfare prayers, prayers so that we can launch those nuclear warfare prayers at the enemy and obliterate his work in our lives as well as in others. So I hope this challenges you. I hope it encourages you. And I hope you have a blessed week in Jesus.